Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green reanimator deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. In fact, the vote was tied with yesterday's Okatra video, so it goes to show how important each and every one of your votes are. And if you want to be part of the voting process to decide which video gets featured next, make sure to visit my Patreon page. But for now we're taking a look at Old Stick Fingers as our commander has power and toughness each equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard. And when we cast it using X in its casting cost, we get reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal X creature cards and put those into our graveyard. And if you look at our deck, we only have four creatures that we're happy to put into our graveyard to later reanimate, and those include Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, the 10 mana 10 10 legendary Eldrazi that's indestructible, and when Ulamog attacks we get to exile the top 20 cards of the opponent's library, even though we're not casting Ulamog to exile two permanents, still very powerful. Then there's Vorinclex, a Voice of Hunger, a 7-6 Trampler, saying when we tap a land for mana, and an extra mana essentially, so it doubles the mana our lands produce, and whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Then we also have Shieldred Whispering One, the 7 mana 6-6 six, six Legendary Praetor with Swamp Walk, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, so it can help us get even more creatures into play, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature, so it can be quite devastating if it sticks around. And then last but certainly not least is Cultivator Colossus, a 7 mana star star with power and toughness each equal to the number of lands we control. It has Trample, and when the Colossus enters a battlefield, we may put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, and if we do, we get to draw a card and to repeat this process. Now if we take a look at our lands distribution here, we've got over 60 lands in our deck, which means we're quite likely to reveal extra lands to the ability from Colossus if we put extra lands in play, so we can often chain together a whole bunch of lands, giving us a massive mana advantage, as well as a very large Cultivator Colossus. Now we could be playing Cultivator Colossus as the only creature in our deck, so we're guaranteed to find it if we play Old Stick Fingers for X equals 1, but having the extra creatures just gives us a bit of extra redundancy in case the opponent does manage to deal with our Colossus. So usually the game plan is to play Old Stick Fingers for X equals 2, which will put two of these four creatures in our graveyard at random, and then on the following turn we've got a whole bunch of 5 mana reanimation effects to bring one of our creatures back into play, and if we reanimate Shieldred she can also bring back a second creature afterwards. So that's the list of reanimation effects, including a Planeswalker here with Liliana Death's Majesty. We also have a Legendary Sorcery, which will require Old Stick Fingers to stick around on the battlefield so we can cast it. And we've got Assemble from Parts, which potentially lets us reanimate for 4 mana, but it does require triple black, so it's not always all that easy on the mana base. Then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got some additional interaction, usually discard effects, to make sure we can clear a path for our reanimation spells, to maybe take away any counter spells the opponent might have in hand. So we've got Dreadfugue, Duress, Inquisition of Gozilek, Thoughtseize, and then some 2 mana discard effects in the form of Agonizing Remorse and Check for Traps. And then a Veil of Summer, if we can keep up an extra mana, can also make our spells uncounterable for the turn. Then we've got some ramp cards, including Dark Ritual, and then a whole host of 2 mana ramp cards. Of course, these can't be creatures, because that counteracts our game plan of putting our creatures in the graveyard. So we've got Emergent Sequence, Explore, Into the North, Wolf Hollow Haven, couple ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone, and then a Careful Cultivation can be channeled to make a 1-1 creature that can tap for mana. Then we've got a little bit of removal with Binding the Old Gods and Death Sprout, which can also ramp, and then I'm not going to go over every single reanimation spell, but the gist is usually 5 mana to bring back a creature. Some of them have a small upside, like Unbreakable Bond giving our creature lifelink, and then we've got Bond of Revival to give our creature haste, which is probably one of the most powerful ones. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, has over 60 lands, so we've got a ton of utility lands that we can put in play with Cultivator Colossus, creature lands like Hive, we've got Lair of the Hydra, some Corlos creature lands like Faceless Haven, Blink Moth Nexus, and Crawling Barons, cards like Access Tunnel to make our creatures unblockable, Labyrinth has been a lifesaver, preventing damage from opposing creatures. We have some additional 
ways to draw cards like Castle Lockthwain, as well as Memorial to Folly, which can maybe get back a creature from our graveyard. So if we put a ton of lands in play with Cultivator Colossus, we can maybe use Memorial to get back Ulamog and then actually cast Ulamog to exile two permanents. So there's a ton of things we can still do with all our lands once we put them in play with Colossus. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw facing Satoru Umezawa, a ninjutsu deck, and our hand's pretty nice. No interaction to take away counter spells, but we've got a redundant reanimation effect, and then into the north sets up turn three stick fingers, turn four reanimate. Their opponent's got their early ninjutsu enabler. But no turn two ninjutsu. They might counter my ram spell. They do not. Do we have a woodland chasm or faceless haven we can put in play? We do. Alright, so time for stick fingers. Now our opponent could also cheat something powerful into play using Umezawa's ability here, so we could be facing an Ulamog for all we know as we put our two Frexen Praetors in the graveyard. Not necessarily the best set of creatures to reanimate, but could see Shieldred doing some work if she can stick around. So our opponent's not going for the 4-mana ninjutsu ability. Don't really care if Stick Fingers dies. Although Elspeth's Nightmare is actually incredibly effective. Not only does it take away one of my reanimation spells, but it also exiles my graveyard. So, might as well bring back Shieldred now with haste. And then next turn, I might be able to bring back. Vorinclex using Shieldred's ability because they'll make us discard Salvage. If they can kill Shieldred, we're in trouble because then we don't get anything back. So Salvage gone. Still have some creature lands at least. But ideally, we get to bring back our other creature. They're gonna ninjutsu something. Ooh, Jingataxius. So it's the battle of the Praetors here. Opponent gets to draw seven end of turn. We'll have to discard our hand. But at least we'll be able to bring back our Praetor. And then I could replay old stick fingers to potentially put some other creatures in our graveyard. Although I probably want to wait until after the nightmare goes away. So, let's see here, can Inquisition... And then... Bloodsheaf's Thirst is probably the most relevant one, Shield Roots also in hand. But we'll take Thirsts. And then I can play a Labyrinth before it goes away. And activate... Crawling Barons. Which I can activate twice. An attack. If our opponent jumps with Pilfering Imp, they will lose Jingataxius to Shieldred's ability, so they won't. Alright, so we'll see how this plays out. Opponent at 9 life. One mana away from casting Shieldred. They can play Humizawa. And Kaito, but their lands will stay tapped. And uh, Shieldred does have Swamp Walk, so they won't be able to block her. It's like your defenses aren't even there. Opponent gets to draw seven. And Hive the draw. So I could play old stick fingers, but I might be better off just activating my creature lands. So 
sadly don't have enough snow mana for Faceless Haven, actually. Since the extra mana isn't snow mana, apparently. So, I guess we'll just be activating Crawling Barons. And then attack with a team. They could double block Umezawa, Jin on Vorinclex, chump my Crawling Barons with a Ninja. Then we still get to take out Jingitaxius at the very least, and our opponent falls to three. So I think that leaves us in okay spots, especially with Hive as an extra threat here. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a hand that's a mulligan. And then a hand that's an excellent keep. Two ram spells to choose from. Probably go for Guardian Idol, since it's less likely to be removed than a creature from Emergent Sequence. We're facing Tezret, the Schemer. So, blue-black artifacts. Now they might have some counter spells. We don't have any discard effects to take a look. Ooh, and a Dark Ritual sets up turn 2 Tezzeret. It's their opponent off to a great start. The rest could come in handy. I think we still play old stick fingers here. Alternatively, I could emergent sequence and then next turn. Yeah, I mean, I could still duress plus stick fingers, but might as well just do this now. Colossus and Tulamog. And if it looks like our opponent is keeping up a counter spell, we can duress first. If not, we can just uh, go for it. A valuable addition. Next turn they could ultimate Tesseret. Alright, so our opponent does have two treasures. So it's not inconceivable for them to have a counter spell. So let's have a look. Just a bag of holding. Fair enough. Do I want to play an extra land out? Since we have a Colossus we can reanimate, it's probably not necessary. So I'll just sequence, get a land, and then next turn we'll have more lands in hand to combo with Colossus. Tazeret ultimates, so they get to turn an artifact into a 5-5 creature each turn. And do I want to chump now? Probably no need. Veil of Summer also would have been excellent. Don't think we need to play around a counterspell here. Would rather have the extra land in hand. And then if we want to play around removal on Colossus, for instance, we could keep a green land in hand to be able to cast Veil of Summer, but probably better off just putting them in play with Colossus and then pass it back. Now the emblem could still give us some trouble here, so the game's far from over. Got a few discard spells, that probably won't be too effective. And then another reanimation spell to bring back Ulamog. Merchant's Dock Hand activates. And Treasure turns into a 5 5. Ooh, Memorial to Folly. That could let me bring back Ulamog so I can actually cast it, which may be better. So let's start with a check for traps. Take rejects. And then don't have to take Feed the Swarm because we have Veil of Summer. So I can remorse taking the Terrarium. And then, yeah, I think we wait to actually cast Ulamog which means 
Do I want to attack for 13? Could activate Crawling Barons here. Make sure to keep up green mana. And then attack with just the Crawling Barons. Keep Colossus on defense, or we can attack with it as well. Probably not at risk of dying next turn with two blockers. Veil of Summer counters feed the swarm. And our opponent concedes. Next turn, activate Memorial, and then pretty sure we have enough mana to cast Ulamog, although let me do the math here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, should be enough. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Gretchen Tichwillow. Our hand's pretty bad, no reanimation spell, and... A shield root we don't really want to draw. All right, shield root and Vorinclex. Send those back, and then I guess we'll keep this. Not ideal. I think we hang on to the two reanimation spells. Pretty likely to draw land. Opponent could have counter spells, so want to have a backup. And then we'll wait for stick fingers for X equals two. And of course, Old Stick Fingers is a cast trigger, so we're not as worried about our opponent countering our commander, as we'll still be able to put those creatures in the graveyard. Can channel Cultivation end of turn now. Would have been nice a turn earlier. And then I can stick fingers for X equals 3. And now we even have an instant speed back for more that we can use to reanimate a creature, which will help against counter spells. So Colossus, Ulamog, and Vorinclex, no shielded. So I think we should respect interaction. And just uh, keep up back for more, even though I could go for a hasty Bond of Revival to potentially attack with a huge Colossus. It's also unclear that Colossus is the uh, best option here, because we only have one land in hand. Opponent does activate Gretchen, so now we get to back for more. And could go for Vorinclex, which is likely to tap the opponent out. And then... Yeah, opponent concedes to Vorinclex being reanimated at instant speed. Next turn we could go for Hasty Colossus with a Bond of Revival, hopefully after drawing an extra land, so we're more likely to chain together a whole bunch of them. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the first Sliver, so 5 color Sliver potentially, or could be some other combo deck. Our hand is missing a reanimation spell, so probably have to mulligan. This one might be too slow. Back for more at 6 mana. Might be a little bit too expensive. Also don't have any ramp cards. Alright, this is perfect. Don't expect to need Veil of Summer. But then we have a turn 2 Careful Cultivation. Which sets up turn 3 Stick Fingers. Could even use Dark Ritual to put multiple creatures in our graveyard. And then Cauldron's Gift to turn after. Paradise Druids could still go into a Sliver deck. So, do I want a Dark Ritual here? The downside is if they kill my Human Monk, I wouldn't be able to Cauldron's Gift next turn. And I think Stick Fingers for 2 is probably enough. And then if they deal with my Monk token, we'll still be able to reanimate next turn. I've got a Cultivator Colossus, so I can Dark Ritual out. Cauldron's Gift to have more lands in hand. So the Colossus is more likely to chain together a whole bunch of them. And there's a Leeching Sliver. Go for Colossus. And let's have some fun.
so far so good. Nice to have a backup reanimation spell. So even if the Colossus gets exiled here, we still have some creature lands to activate and an extra creature to reanimate. <laughs> Do I want to reveal a basic land to my Snarl? No thanks. Alright. Well, opponent conceded just as we were running out of lands, but yeah, our hand was pretty stacked, so it's understandable. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got an acceptable hand. Shielded in hand is not ideal, but makes it more likely that we put Colossus in the graveyard, which finds a lot of lands so we can just hard cast Shieldred. And then, of course, Mindstone for ramp, very important too. Even drew Assemble from parts, so that lets me potentially reanimate for 4 mana as opposed to 5. Can be a bit of a nombo with Cultivator Colossus, because then its power is set to 4-4 four, four, as opposed to equal to the number of lands you control. And we're facing Chu Lane, typically a creature deck. So hopefully it doesn't have too many counter spells. So we get to play Stick Fingers for two. And then I can keep a land in hand next turn if we use Assemble from parts over Okiba Salvage. There's Cultivator Colossus. And this is also an instance. Although we can only activate it at sorcery speed. So we'll see if they tap out. Hydroid for three. So best they can do is a Pact of Negation. So how much do we care about Colossus being large versus having an extra land in hand? I think the extra land is probably more important. There's a memorial, so that could be fun if we put a bunch of lands in play to actually cast Ulamog. Alright. Get to keep going. Not a bad haul. Got a bunch more reanimation effects in hand. Can hard cast Shieldred now. Now we did have to put Colossus back into our library, so wouldn't be able to reanimate it a second time in case of a sweeper. So that's also the downside of Assemble from Parts. But that's okay. Inquisition can have a look. Take Azusa, Karn's Emperor Sundering to take an extra turn. So I could cast Shieldred, but there's no creature to make them sacrifice, so maybe a Liliana. Reanimate Vorinclex is the way to go. Good news. I've arrived. And then now uh, we get to make more mana, so I can still hard cast Shieldred if I want. Sure. And then next turn I could... Maybe play old stick fingers for X equals 1, putting Ulamog in graveyard, then activate Memorial to bring it back and then cast it. Not sure if we'll have enough for all that. But that would let us exile to permanence, which probably puts the game away, in case this isn't enough. Opponent draws for turn, but seems like they've disconnected. Can't blame them in the face of two Phyrexians. So what's our plan here? Stick fingers for X equals 1. I guess it could also hit Cultivator Colossus, because that got shuffled back. There's Ulamog. Activate Memorial. And then we still have enough mana to cast Ulamog. So we can exile those blue lands. Perfect. And attack. Could have also just activated a large layer of the Hydra, which might have been enough. But where's the fun in that? Take Temporal Sundering. Still haven't plus Liliana. Could have started there. I am in 
pass it back. And our opponent seems pretty dead. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Captain Ripley Vance. And our hand seems quite nice. Cold Steel Heart sets up Stick Fingers turn 3 for X equals 2. And then we just need one more land. Opponent with an early Beaumont Courier. Don't expect a Monorad deck to have much graveyard hate. Which would otherwise be the main concern. And let's see which creatures we get. It is also more exciting if we don't have only one or two creatures in our deck. So it's going to be Shieldred and Vorinclex. There's Captain Ripley. And I guess we can get Liliana down. And we'll go for Shieldreds. And our opponent concedes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Kyodai, Soul of Kamigawa, so it could be any five-color deck. Our hand is not perfect, we don't have ramp, we don't have any interaction, and we've got one of our payoff cards in hand, so it might be worth a free mulligan. Alright, this is decidedly worse. And this I can keep. Put Shieldred on the bottom. So no ramp, no interaction, but two reanimation spells. I guess we'll also have to draw green mana. Thoughtseize takes one of them away. So glad I mulliganed since the other hands only had one reanimation effect at most. It's gonna take Bond of Revival, I'm sure. And then still need to find some green mana along the way. But when we're playing over 60 lanes, a lot of them make green mana too. Call Steel Heart on two. So far unclear if our opponent's just a good stuff deck or if they have a specific theme. Like maybe a Shrines deck. Alright, it is a Shrines deck with a Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. Can return the favor. And Borrowed Time and Sithis are both problematic. Steward can also find the five color shrine, so that's also not ideal. So Steward's gonna take two turns to get the shrine we're afraid of. But given that we don't have green mana, it might take us a while before we get all stick fingers down. So it might still be the pick. And then a borrow time. We'll have to kinda plan around. Maybe go for Cultivator Colossus, which can put a lot of lanes in play. But by taking this steward, we're under less pressure ourselves, as the opponent won't be able to assemble all the shrines. Alright, more black mana is awkward. Still probably better off holding it, unless we want to activate... Hive or Faceless Haven, which I guess is a fair argument. So we'll activate Hive. And then they can flash in their commander and basically trade for Hive by double blocking. Kyodai makes Sithis indestructible. So that also relieves a bit of pressure. Opponent can just replay Kyodai, but they don't. Alright, there's my green mana. Sadly, it comes into play tapped. So... 
could have some instant speed removal for Faceless Haven. So I don't think I'm going to risk attacking, given that they didn't just replay Kyodai with a floating mana. And now we can stick fingers for either 3 or 4. The extra land in hand could be useful for Cultivator Colossus. Although... Having all four creatures in the graveyard in the first place might be worth it. And then... Might go for Shieldred first. Or we can try and bait out the... Removal spell we know about. Alright, wash away counters all stick fingers. So that's what they were holding. But again, since it's a cast trigger, we don't really care. So if I go for shield roots, we can make them sacrifice either Sithis or Kyodai if they replay it at instant speed. And then lose Shieldred to Borrowed Time. Could try and bait with an Ulamog. Which I don't really mind if it gets exiled. And then we can keep Shieldred plus uh, Cultivator Colossus. Could also go for Vorinclex. That way if they borrow time they'll at least lose a bunch of mana. But because they have Cold Steel Heart and Sanctum to make mana it's not all that impactful. So, it's between Ulamog and Shieldred. And I think we go for Ulamog first. And then I'll keep the lands in hand for Cultivator Colossus. Bona did not flash in their commander. Borrow time draws a card, exiles Ulamog. And the Mindstone. Okay, so now I'm probably going to go for Shieldreds. And then wait one more turn on Cultivator Colossus. But a source to plowshares. Alright. So, got rid of two removal spells, and now hopefully Cultivator Colossus can carry us across the finish line. So that's why having four creatures as opposed to just one Colossus might be worth it. Naturalist draws a card. Hopefully they can't chain together too many enchantments. Destiny Spinner is a good one. Can turn lands into creatures. Alright, so they've got one card in hand. Hopefully it's not another answer here. Well, we can have a look. Just a land. Alright, time for Colossus. Only two lands in hand, so we could fizzle out pretty quickly. Binding's not bad, though. Can free Ulamog by destroying the Borrowed Time. Although I guess there's still Kyodai, which can make the Borrowed Time indestructible, if I'm not mistaken. So, there's lots of layers. Banishing Lights, once again, deals with Colossus, so that was a lucky top deck. And yeah, if they keep up Kyodai as opposed to playing it out, we're gonna be in trouble. But it's tempting for them to maybe activate Destiny Spinner and Guardian Idol. Nope, our opponent is disciplined. Keeps up six mana. 
and Agonizing Remorse cannot make them discard their commander, sadly. So, yeah, don't really have a great solution to this. Opponent's got another land in hand. Can exile a card from their graveyard, not that it matters. So, can go for binding, hope they don't see the uh, play. But at this point, it seems pretty obvious that they do. So I can maybe try and activate Faceless Haven. And use that to some effect. They might flash in Kyodai just to start beating down with it, but they don't. So three of our creatures got answered. Only have a Vorinclex left, which is not doing much for us. Alright, well, let's activate Haven, so now they might use Kyodai to make their creature indestructible that we try and ambush. And Destiny Spinner or Sithis. I think Destiny Spinner is scarier. Alright, there we go. So now I can binding one of the enchantments and maybe still unlock Colossus or Ulamog but it might be too little too late. And then we can Haven first if we want. If I Binding, I can still activate Haven, which is probably worth more. And then I don't think Ulamog saves me here. Need to get very lucky with Cultivator Colossus. Alright, we fizzled out right away. So, I'll keep my Haven back to block. And between Kyodai pumping to get plus 5 plus 5 and Destiny Spinner, we might just be dead on board. So yeah, happy we had multiple threats in our deck as opposed to just one Colossus, but Opponent had a few too many XL effects. But hopefully it made for an interesting game nonetheless. Kind of playing to our outs with the Binding 2, trying to bait out Kyodai, baiting out the Borrow Time at the start of the game. They can activate Kyodai multiple times. And that should be enough for lethal here. So possible binding should have just gone after Kyodai, but that also doesn't win us the game, so GG. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Tovalar, red-green werewolves, and we've got a fine hand. Haven sets up turn 4 stick fingers, turn 5 awakening. Usually want to enchant basic lands with Haven in case of a Field of Ruin. Ooh, Liberator could potentially mess with our enchantment. So, does it change our play? Could just play Guardian Idol, and then next turn play Stick Fingers for 3. And then turn after Reanimate, because if I play Stick Fingers for 2 and her opponent destroys my Haven, I still have to wait a turn to cast the Awakening anyway, so might as well cast the bigger Stick Fingers then. Even their opponent gets to play uh, their commander and draw card in the process. Alright, opponent's missing a red mana apparently. We'll see if they blow up one of my artifacts or enchantments. If they don't. Okay, so stick fingers for x equals 4, I guess, would be here. 
So we get to put all four creatures in our graveyard. And then we've got to pick off the litter next turn. A red green probably doesn't have a way to beat an Ulamog. But uh, could go for Shieldred. I'll block if they have a pump spell. I'm not too upset. Snakeskin Veil for the trade. That's fine. Although now I'm tempted to go for Colossus, now that we have three lands in hand, so we can draw a whole bunch of cards and likely find an extra reanimation effect. We draw our two removal spells. Alright, and our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Linvala, Shield of Seagate. This is an easy mulligan, as we've got two of our payoffs in hand, and this is a great keep. Discard spell to take away a counter. Turn to idle, turn three, old stick fingers. Turn four, return upon the tide is the plan. No counter spell to worry about. Can take a trap finder to throw off their curve a bit. So. They are committed to the party theme. And then we're hoping for Cultivator Colossus, as we have quite a few lands in hand. Could convince myself to wait a turn on Stick Fingers, so we can play it for X equals 3 as opposed to X equals 2. Liliana. Nah, I think we still play 1 for X equals 2 here. All right, and there's a Colossus. So things are looking up. Limvala can pressure Liliana. So it may not be worth it to play our Planeswalker here. Extra land is good. So we'll go for Colossus. And our opponent concedes, so that was a fast one, but yeah, showing off our ideal curve of discard spell, ram spell, stick fingers, reanimation spell, and if the opponent doesn't have the perfect draw, they probably won't be able to beat it. So overall, this reanimator deck is incredibly powerful. If you're facing it, then make sure to mulligan until you find one of your few graveyard hate cards, if you have any in the deck at all because that's the best way to beat it, besides just having a lot of counter spells, which can also get there if uh, the Stick Fingers deck doesn't draw any discard. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.